This is the form that we just cut out on the CNC. It's three separate pieces of three quarter inch MDF and then I put spacers between it uh, because this is six inches wide and so I made my mold exactly six inches wide so that I can rest on those three pieces and get a nice flat curve all the way around. One thing I'm doing with this project, usually when I do a lamination, what I'll do is we'll just use glue and then we'll just bend it over the form. In this particular case, we have a very tight radius we're going to have to work with in order to make this bend happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-bend all of the pieces for the sides to make this bend work. It decreases the chance of anything cracking and me wasting material. I really don't have a lot of material to work with, so I don't want these things to crack and then I lose all of my progress that I've made so far. I'm going to show you what I have. This is the cherry that I'm going to be bending. It is one eighth of an inch thick. And then I have some steel sheets that just help support the structure from cracking as well. And then of course this is the heating blanket that comes with it. This is the blanket that I use to bend guitar sides when I'm building guitars. Coming in very handy right now. So uh, I'm going to walk you through the steps here real quick of how I do this. Maybe you'll learn something. Uh, either way, hope you enjoy watching how I make these bends happen. Okay, one of the first things you'll want to do is take your side and just spray some water on it. Now, if you're steam bending or doing something like that, you will want to soak your wood, but steam bending, of course, you're dealing with three quarter inch thick, half inch thick, sometimes even one to two inches thick. And all you have to do is just mist your side and just get it a little bit wet. Anything more than this, and you're really over killing it. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is make what's called the sandwich. The sandwich is the steel backer, and then I've marked out the centers on all of my pieces so I know exactly where center is so I can line this up on my mold. I'm going to just sandwich all of this together. I'm putting the heating blanket on the top. With my experience it doesn't matter very much uh, whether you put that on the top or the bottom. Just making sure everything is centered up here. So I do like this. And then I'll take a couple clamps, secure the sides. And then last but not least, you want to insert this thermometer under the wood, underneath the blanket. Now one of the giveaways that you're ready to start bending is you'll start to hear a slight sizzle and when you touch this it'll it's almost like putting your hand on a frying pan so you don't want to touch it too long to test the heat but you'll feel the heat start in there and you'll see that this is going to bend now relatively easily. I'm going to take my clamps off and again I'm not trying to bend this perfectly to this form. All I'm trying to do is get this so that when I do the laminations I'll have six pieces together of my 1 8 inch to make a 3 quarter inch thick bend that these will go easily and comfortably into position. That's all that I'm trying to do. All right, so this is a collection of everything that I need to do the lamination bend. I'm going to show you a couple things here. I'm going to squat down a little so you can see it. I have some special lamination glue. This is not tight bond, tight bond two, tight bond three, or any of that. This is a specialty glue uh, from a specialty supplier. For those of you that are interested in doing bends, if you email me, southernindianasawmill at gmail.com, I'll be happy to give you the name of the company that manufactures this product. It's not cheap glue, but it is the best glue for doing laminations. It holds the lamination nice and tight. It's very rigid and made specifically for this purpose. I have several C-clamps. Harbor Freight to the rescue again. I uh, got all of these. Got a couple uh, pipe clamps for securing the top and holding that down nice and sturdy. And I have a roller. 
You want a very fine roller that the glue won't get all stuck in and get all nasty in there. I've also taken my form here and I've taken wax and I've waxed all around the form so that any glue that might come off will just be easy to scrape off a little bit later. One quick note about this process. It has to happen fairly quick. Once you start rolling your first layer of glue, you maybe have about 20 to 25 minutes to get all of your clamps on or else that glue starts to set and you don't get a nice lamination. You'll get gaps in it, just won't look good. So it has to go relatively quickly. I've done this several different times with different apparatuses, um, but there's so many ways that you could do a lamination bend. Uh, you could do like this with a bunch of clamps uh, and a bunch of gluing clamping calls. You could use a machine like this that is uh, a bending machine that uses two steel bands to go around it. There's also a third option that you could do, and that third option um, is with vacuuming. You could use a big vacuum bag and try to hold down a lot of vacuum pressure and bring, bring that down. But the reason I'm not doing it is this. Uh, number one, the bags have a tendency to break and tear when you use them. This particular lamination, being a tighter radius, even though one eighth of an inch thick seems relatively thin as far as wood goes, it's still thick for a bend for a tight radius. Uh, the vacuum bag, I don't believe, would pull enough pressure to suck all that in. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and do this lamination. That's the glue up. I gotta let this set for at least 12 hours now before I go ahead and take it out. So, got this done tonight. We'll take it out and look at it tomorrow. Well, there you have it. That's how you do uh, a radius bend. You can do this with any species of wood, of course. Um, very effective method of doing it. One of the reasons that I do this is it's very, very strong. 
even if you put a lot of weight on this, it's very difficult to bend it when you get up to three quarter of an inch or thicker. And uh, this structure will hold virtually forever. So I'm going to have more videos coming uh, of this particular project. Uh, this is a writing desk that I'm building. And basically it's going to have one leg going this way and there's going to be another one going this way and that will make up one side for one leg of the writing desk. I'll be making two of these desks but for video purposes uh, you're going to be seeing one desk. So I got a lot more bends to do. Um, those videos will probably be a little while down the road. I will try to keep some other content coming. But just wanted to show you how I do this real quick. Thanks for watching.